So in 2017, Huawei announced the MateBook X, and one year later, they announced the MateBook X Pro. In 2019, well, we had the MateBook 13. Where does it fit in between all those? Well, today I'll tell you my full review. Stay tuned. So the MateBook 13 was announced at CES 2019 and quickly became one of our favorite laptops. I think there's a lot of potential here and spoiler alert, it's basically a perfect 13 inch laptop. There are a few caveats of things you should know about. Let's give you a product tour and talk about all the specifications first. All right, starting with the outside here, we have Huawei's typical space gray, and I kind of laugh a little bit because that's Apple's color scheme as well, but uh, it works pretty well here. It's carried over from their other devices. Regarding the logo, they did change it up. It used to be mirrored. Now it's sort of grippy and it has this nice kind of cool reflective effect to it. It's still nice. Uh, I know I don't love their logo, but you know, it is what it is. Now turning to the left-hand side of this device, it's pretty thin, so you're not gonna get a lot of choice here for IO. You do get USB Type-C for charging, as well as a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, and there's a little LED to let you know it's charging as well. Now on the right-hand side, you just get another USB Type-C port, and I gotta stress, these are Type-C ports, not Thunderbolt 3. That's gonna be a big difference between this and the MateBook X Pro. Now looking at the bottom, it's pretty clean design here. You do have the intakes here as well as a couple fans with their new Shark Fin 2.0. I, I always chuckle at the names that these guys come up with for cooling systems. But yes, this is a refined cooling system. It's actually very good, but you get two intakes here to chill that chipset. You also get the speakers on the bottom and I'm not a fan of that. I'll talk a little bit more about the design choice though and some of the trade-offs with this device. All right, let's take a look here at the display. It's 13.3 inch, 2160 by 1440 or 200 PPI. It's a really nice display. We get these really thin bezels. This is basically the same display that was found in 2017's MateBook X. The big difference though is this year, this is now a touch screen. So yes, you do get a touch screen. No, it does not support pen as far as I can tell. So don't expect that, but hey, it's a touch screen at least. It's a very good display. It's a three by two aspect ratio. So if it looks a little different to you, that's why. That's the same aspect ratio as Surface Laptop. And going by comments from a lot of you, and I know my personal preference, I love this aspect ratio. It's really good compared to a MacBook. Well, that's a 16 by 10, a little bit wider. This is gonna be a little bit taller. Now it's worth noting, unlike the MateBook X Pro, this does keep the webcam at the top here. So it's a one megapixel. It's an all right shooter, nothing crazy. And you get a little sensor here for the auto brightness of the display. I have to point this out. Huawei is very aggressive with their auto display brightness, meaning it tends to be a darker screen than I think most people would prefer. The good news is it will definitely preserve your battery life, but you'll probably want to disable that if you don't like the way they aggressively use screen brightness. Looking at the keyboard deck, this is a spit and image of the MateBook X from 2017. The big difference is there are no speakers behind the keyboard here, which is one of the big selling points of the MateBook X. And the reason for that is because of fans. This has dual fans now underneath it, cooling that CPU. And while you can't have the speakers up here, so they're underneath. And that's just one of the trade-offs. On the other hand, this is gonna be outperform the MateBook X by a lot due to the new configuration. All right, looking at the keyboard here, very familiar design that Huawei has been using for its last few laptops. Edge to edge design here, about 1.2 millimeter for travel, backlit, really good typing. I've had no issues with this whatsoever, just really nice typing experience. Taking a closer look here at the trackpad, very good size. It's pretty large, definitely larger than the original MateBook X was. It's glass, it's smooth, it's precision. No complaints with the clicking either. Huawei's had a little bit of issues with the clicking on these trackpads in the past. Hopefully that won't be an issue with this one. I haven't had any problems with it. Now, when it compared to Apple's MacBook, that's still a massive trackpad compared to even to this one, but this is still one of the better ones on the market. And on the power button here, you do get a fingerprint reader built in. So that's your Windows Hello. And Huawei does a special trick here where when you first press it to power on the device and you get that Huawei login screen, well, it'll record your fingerprint and save it for Windows Hello. So you don't need to press it twice. All right, now regarding the internal hardware, you get two specifications here. You get a Core i5-8265U, that is a eighth generation Whiskey Lake processor. Or you can get a Core i7-8565U, which is what we have here. It's also a very good performer. So this is a little bit faster than last year's eighth generation Intel processor. It's not a huge difference, but you do get that extra performance boost and you do get over four gigahertz now for that Core i7. Now, another big difference between that Core i5 and the i7 model, is gonna come down to a GPU. Now, I don't wanna oversell this. The Core i7 
has an MX150 GPU in it. It's an NVIDIA one. It's what most companies are using in place of Iris Plus or Iris Pro graphics, which are not available for eight generation processors. It's a good GPU. It's gonna give you a little boost. And for those of you paying attention, this is the 25 watt version of that GPU. There's actually two versions of it. So this is the more powerful one. It's still not very powerful. I don't wanna sell this as like a GTX 1050 or 1060 even, but it does give you that little extra boost, which, hey, I think a lot of us will take, especially in a 13-inch laptop. Now, the Core i5 version sticks with Intel UHD 620 integrated graphics, so you're going to have that. When it comes to storage, it's 256 or 512 gigs of SSD. Very good performer. They are using Western Digital SSDs in this, which is weird. I've never actually seen a Western Digital SSD, but excellent performance. 3,500 for the reads. 2500 for the writes. That's a very good performing SSD. I don't see any reason to upgrade that if you wanted to, unless you just needed more space. And when it comes to RAM, well, you get eight gigabytes of DDR3. It's all right. It's nothing outstanding, but I think for this class, it's totally fine. All right, a few other bits about this laptop. You do get Bluetooth 5.0, which is, you know, a nice change to have. You also get Dolby Atmos sound. So Huawei has been one of the companies embracing Dolby, and I applaud them for that. I really am a big fan of Dolby Atmos for the speakers, not just the headphones. Pretty good audio. Those speakers are on the bottom, so they're not going to be the best sounding, but they are really good for what they are. I'd rate them as above average for this class. Now, when it comes to battery life, you're talking about a 42 watt hour battery and you get a nice compact type C charger. Battery life is going to be around seven hours for the version with the MX150 in it. You'll get a little bit more if you use the Core i5 version, of course, and I actually find that pretty good. I've had no issues here with the battery life. You can extend it if you do keep that screen brightness down a lot. But overall, I've been very happy with the performance and the battery life of this device. All right, so let's bring it all in. The Huawei MateBook 13 is a really interesting laptop. Now, it fits right in between the MateBook X from 2017 and the MateBook X Pro. And let me talk a little bit more about that. So this now has a touchscreen where the MateBook X did not. This is also a fan system with the option for discrete graphics with that MX150. Again, the MateBook X doesn't have that. The MateBook X, though, is a half pound lighter and you absolutely feel that. It's also significantly thinner. You also get a little bit better audio because of the speaker placement because of no fans. So this is basically a more powerful version of the MateBook X. Now, if you want even more than that, well, you do get the MateBook X Pro, which is gonna be a larger display. You you also do get two type c ports but one of those is gonna be thunderbolt 3. that's a bit of a bummer here i kind of wish this did have thunderbolt 3 but i can't understand they're trying to keep the price down don't forget you don't get thunderbolt 3 but you do get an mx150 which is kind of rare to find in a 13 inch laptop everything else though was fantastic the display is very good with they say 100 percent srgb and i actually did clock it at that it's excellent display very good brightness a little aggressive on the auto setting but you can change that yourself it also has a three by two aspect ratio which again besides microsoft is hard to find in this class so i'm really happy to have it typing is also good as well as the trackpad everything about this is kind of perfect i guess the one issue is going to be huawei itself, which is under increasing fire from a lot of world governments because of their supposed practices. Now, I don't really want to weigh in on that. I'll just say if you work in an intelligence agency, well, you probably shouldn't use Huawei. If you're just a straight up consumer, well, I don't see a problem with it. I use Huawei for my phones and my laptop, so I don't really have a problem with it, but I'll leave that for you to decide. Just be aware of the controversy. All right, so there's a quick look at the Huawei MateBook 13, one of the best laptops so far in 2019, although it's still early. Now, if you're interested in buying this device, well, you can pick it at Amazon, Newegg, and Microsoft starting on January 29th. You can also go to a Microsoft store if you're lucky enough to have one near you and pick it up at February 4th. Now, if you want more information about this, including my full review, make sure you go to the description below. We'll have all the links. Leave me a comment, though, and tell me what you think. What can Huawei do to make this laptop even better, especially when it comes to that pricing and feature set? Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. 8265U or the 8565U, that's a Core i7 processor. 8565. I have to get that one more time. Damn, damn these games. Should I say January 29th? No, because we're gonna be publishing this on the 29th.